Today we're going to be working on AP Calculus FRQ from 2011, question number four. And in this problem, we are given the graph of F, which is represented by this graph right here. And we are also given the function g of x, which is equal to 2x plus the integral of f of t dt from 0 up until x. So to answer problem letter A, we're supposed to find g of negative 3 g prime of x and also to evaluate g prime of negative 3. So let's go ahead and answer the first part of our problem letter A. So we know that g of x is given which is equal to 2x plus the integral of f of t dt from 0 to x. And we are first tasked to find g of negative 3. So using the same formula, which is 2x plus the integral of f of t dt from 0 through x, we are just replacing the value of x by negative 3, which gives us 2 times negative 3. And since our upper limit is greater than our lower limit, we need to correct the limits of integration, so we will end up with negative 6 minus negative 3 to 0 of f of t dt. So we know that this integral function right here from our um, graph of f will be able to find the integral function by taking or finding the area under the curve. So we have negative 6 minus the area of from negative 3 up until 0 is quarter of a circle so we'll have the area of 1 fourth of let's draw a diagram right here the area of a circle and we know that the area of a circle is equal to um, pi r squared therefore r in this particular um, figure right here will be from 1, 2, 3 units. So the area of this circle, full circle, is 9 pi. But since this is just a representation of the quarter of a circle, our equation now for g of negative 3 is equal to negative 6 minus 9 pi, or 1 fourth times 9 pi which is equal to negative 6 minus 9 pi all over 4. So this is our g of negative 3. Now the second part of this problem is to find g prime of x and to evaluate it at g prime of negative 3. So given that our g of x is equal to 2x plus the integral of f of t dt from 0 to x, g prime of x will be the derivative of 2x which is 2 and the derivative of the integral function from 0 through x and using the fundamental theorem of calculus we'll be able to differentiate this function into f of x. So g prime of x is equal to 2 plus f of x so we answer that part of the problem. Now the next task is to find g prime of negative 3. So by substitution we have 2 plus f of 3. So we have 2 plus since f of 3 we are given the graph of f all we need to do is to find the value of y when x is equal to 3. So when x is equal to 3 um, I'm sorry g of negative 3 so there. So when x is negative 3, let's find the value of y. So 1, 2, 3, this is negative 3, and y is equal to 0. So therefore, g prime of negative 3 is equal to 2. And that is our problem letter B, I mean letter A. Now let's go ahead and answer problem letter B. And for problem letter B, we are given or we are asked to find the absolute max of the function g 
from the closed interval negative 4 and 3. So the candidates for finding the absolute maximum will be at the endpoints. So if we are going to look at our graph right here, the endpoints will be at negative 4 and negative 3. So we have x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 3. Now the absolute maximum or absolute minimum happens at the extrema or at the critical point and to find the critical point all we need to do is to find g prime of x when it's equal to zero. So let's go ahead and start um, solving for the y value for x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 3. So let's start looking for the value of g of negative 4. And for g of negative 4, we know that we can use the function that we are given to or that was given to us, g of x, which is 2x plus the integral of f of t dt from 0 to x. So since we're looking for g of negative 4, we just need to replace x by 4. So we have 0 to negative 4 f of t dt, which is negative 8. And since our upper limit is lower than our lower limit, we can change it into negative integral by inverting the upper and the lower limit. And referring to our function right here, so to find the value of the integral of the function, we just need to find the area under the curve from 0 up until negative 4. And in this case, we know that we are looking at 2 um, quarters of a circle. So to illustrate that, we'll have negative 8 minus the area of the first circle. So let's call it A sub 1 and the area of the other circle. So let's set this and find the area of the first circle. We know that the formula for finding the area of a circle is pi r squared. And for area 1, let's take the bigger circle right here. And the bigger circle has an area of or a radius of 1, 2, 3. So we have 3 squared right here. So the area of our first circle will be 9 pi. And the area of our second circle, the smaller one, so let's have a sub 2 right here, will be pi r squared, where r is now just one unit. So we have 1 or pi. So this will be our area 2. So plugging it into our um, g of negative 4 function, so we have negative 8 minus, since we are looking for a quarter of a circle, we can just multiply it by 1 fourth or divide it by 4 and add 9 pi plus the negative pi. Now, the reason why this area is negative is because it's below the x-axis, so this one will be negative pi. So we'll have negative 8 minus 1 over 4 multiplied by 8 pi. Therefore, g of negative 4 is equal to negative 8 minus 4 pi. So this is, I'm sorry, 2 pi. So this is our g of negative 4. Now let's go ahead and find the other um, endpoint, which is at g of negative 3. g of negative 3, from the previous example, we know is negative 6 minus 9 pi over 4. So let's just write negative 6 minus 9 pi all over 4 to save time because we already solved this from uh, problem letter A. Now we just need to um, find 
g prime of x. So g prime of x pro from problem letter A, as we know, is equal to um, the function 2 plus f of x. So we need to find the value of g prime of x when it's equal to 0. So we have 2 plus f of x equal to 0. So g prime of x is equal to 0 when f of x is equal to negative 2. Now to find that value of x when the f of x is negative 2, we're going to use our graph right here to locate the value of x when f of x is equal to negative 2. So when f of x is negative 2, 1, 2. So let's um, approximate this. So the approximated value of x when y is negative 2 will be 1, 2, 2.5. So x is equal to 2.5 when f of x is equal to negative 2. So this will be our critical number that we're going to compare uh, g negative 4 and g negative 3 to. So we have g of 2.5. So to find g of 2.5, we're still using 2x plus 0 of x of f of t dt. So we have 2 times 2.5 plus 0 to 2.5 of the function f of t dt. So we have 2 times 2.5 we know is equal to 5 and the function from 0 to 2.5 referring to our graph right here so from 0 up until 2.5, we have two triangles. So we have triangle 1 plus triangle 2. So we're going to solve for the area of those two triangles. For the first triangle, triangle 1. So let's put it here. So we have 1 half base times height, which is equal to the base is 1.5 and the height is 3. And the area of the second triangle will be 1 half base times height, which is 1 half. Base this time is just going to be one unit, and the height will be negative 2. So area 2 is going to be negative 1. So area 2 is negative 1, and area for the first triangle, the bigger triangle, will be 1 half times 1.5 times 3 will be equal to 4.5. So if we're going to um, plug it into our g of 2.5 function, we'll have 5 plus 1 half of 4.5 plus 1 which is approximately equal to five, I mean six plus half of 4.5. This is our g of 2.5. And since we are just trying to find the absolute maximum, we are going to compare it with g of negative four, g of negative three, and g of 2.5. And whichever has the highest value will be our absolute maximum. And in this case, we are able to show that g of 2.5 is the absolute maximum. Since it has the highest value among the three um, values that we compared. And this is problem letter B. For problem letter C, we are asked to um, find the values of x from the interval for which the graph has a point of inflection and give the Let's reason. Let's go ahead and look at our graph right here. So this is the graph of f. And uh, we are seeing two changes on the slope of the graph or concavity of the graph right here and right here. 
and here and on this graph right here. Now, the problem with x equals negative 1 is that this is a vertical slope right here, or we have um, a slope that is undefined at x equals negative 1. So therefore, the POI will not occur at x equals negative 1. But we have another candidate right here at x equal to 0, wherein the concavity is changing from positive, which is above, or the slope of the line is above your um, f right here, and then the slope is going downwards right here for our function f, therefore our POI occurs at x equal to 0. So this is how we answer problem letter C. Now, to, pro to answer problem letter D, on problem letter D, we're supposed to find the average rate of change. of the function and we need to find that there's no point in uh, the intervals um, negative 4 and 3 of c for which f prime of c is equal to the average rate of change and we need to explain why this statement does not contradict the mean value theorem. So let's first find the average rate of change of our function f. So the formula for finding the average rate of change is f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. And we know that a and b is the endpoint of our function right here. So a is equal to negative 4 and b is equal to positive 3. So if we're going to plug it into our function to our formula, average will be f of b, which is f of 3 minus f of a, which is negative 4, all over 3 minus negative 4. Now, looking at our function, we can find the value of f of 3 and f of negative 4. So f of 3, so when x is equal to 3, 1, 2, 3, y is negative 3. So we'll have negative 3 minus, and at negative 4, negative 4, y is negative 1, all over 3 plus 4. Therefore, the average rate of change of f will be negative 3 plus 1 all over 7, which is negative 2 all over 7. So this is our average value. Now we just need to um, justify our answer that the MVT is not contradicted um, in f of x. And here, looking at the graph, we know that the mean value theorem is not contradicted because we have two values right here. We have um, a vertical slope right here, and we also have a um, non-differentiable um, slope at x equal to 0. So we can say that MVT, or the mean value theorem, is not contradicted. since f of x is not differentiable at x equals negative 3 and at x equal to 0. So this is how we can justify um, the mean value theorem being uh, not contradicted for this particular function.